wish you could live to see the world we create. But I already have a koala. All right, ladies and gents, today we're making fake tattoos. Why are we making fake tattoos? Well, one, because they're awesome. Also, maybe you don't have the budget to put a nice piece of work of art on somebody, or in the case of what we're doing today, you need motion. In either case, this method will work for you, so let's go ahead and jump into fusion. There are two major components to this effect, animation and tracking. I'm gonna start with the animation. First, let's plug in the background so our comp is properly sized. I just grabbed a PNG file from Pixabay. Feel free to grab any image that you wanna use. I will leave a link in the description if you wanna use the same one. We're gonna divide the scale up into four parts and animate sections of it. Draw a mask around one of the pans. It doesn't really have to be perfect. We can always adjust this later. Connect the mask to the media. Turn off auto keyframing because we don't want this to move. If we want to change the shape, we don't want keyframing. Add in a transform, control space, XF is a shortcut for it. Now make three copies. Disconnect the mask of the first copy, delete the mask points, and draw a new mask around the second pan. Do the same for the top beam and the stand. Now we should have four different pieces, three that we're going to animate. We'll animate using the transform nodes that we added in. Let's start with the top beam because it's the easiest. Right click, angle, and add an expression. We want this moving back and forth over time, so the easiest way is to use a sign function. Put in sign, parentheses, time, close parentheses. This will animate our angle between negative one and one, going back and forth. Now the beam is swaying, but it's really fast. We can slow it down by dividing our time by 10. Now it's much slower, but it's only going back and forth between negative one and one. We want a much bigger change in our angle than that, so let's go ahead and put everything in parentheses and times it by 10 to get motion from negative 10 to 10. That's much nicer. That's a nice. Now we want the pans to move up and down with the beam. We're going to use a similar expression, but this time in the Y coordinate. Right click the center and add an expression. The point 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is the X coordinate followed by the Y coordinate. We only want to change the Y. And we only want to change it a little bit from where it's at. So we're going to add to the 0 0.5 of the Y, sine time divided by 10. So we have the same speed as the beam. Now divide that by 23 so we limit how much it goes up and down. It's good, but it's moving opposite the beam, so we put a negative in front of the sine function. Now copy and paste the expression into the other pan transform and delete the negative. Now if you want, you can clean up the mask a little bit so it looks a little bit nicer, but it won't matter much because this is going to be pretty small in our shot. All right, the next step is tracking. There are a few considerations for this. First, we need a method that will deform the tattoo around an arm. Not all tracking methods will work for this. The second consideration is how capable your computer is. Tracking can be very intensive. There are two methods of tracking that work really well for this. The first one is STMAP. This is by Emilio over at Millilab Tuts. I'll leave a link to his video in the description. The problem with this is it's kind of complicated and it's not native to Fusion. The other method is a grid warp by Jake Whip. Again, I'll leave a link in the description. This method works really well for bumps and wrinkles and stretching out your tattoo over skin. ST mapping is by far the best method, followed by grid warp. Now, grid warp would be my preferred method, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you something that's a little less taxing on your computer, but still gives you great results. Okay, so as things happen when you record and edit things, sometimes you change your mind. So I'm gonna show you two methods. I'm gonna show you this 3D object method, and I'm gonna show you the grid warp real quick. First, let's do the 3D object. So go ahead and add in a shape 3D, a merge 3D, and a render 3D. And I'm just gonna line them up, make them look nice. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my clip. Okay, so what I can do is I can go ahead and plug in my media. It's merged in, that's where we want it. I'm gonna make a copy of it and I'm gonna put it in an image 3D. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into my merge. So bring the merge 3D up to the viewer. Now we can see this going on. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the shape 3D and bring up the render 3D to the viewer. Now I just need to move this image plane in 3D space till it fills up the screen. Go on the transform, go ahead and increase it. 1.32 is about where it should be. I'm just using this for reference. We're going to get rid of it later. Now I can plug in my shape 3D. Go on your shape, go ahead and change it to cone. So now we need to go over to transform and we can shrink it down and move it on the Z so we can see it. Now it's just a matter of getting your cone the right shape and size to match your arm. So we can change the top radius, the height, all of that. Now that we have it about where we want it, we can go ahead and merge in our scale. Go ahead and plug it right into the shape 3D. Now go to your shape 3D, back on controls. 
We don't want it to be 360 degrees, so we can just shrink this down. Go ahead and mess with the primers till you get the right look. So now that we're about there, let's go ahead and plug this in and get rid of this reference material. So now that we've got our scale roughly in the position we want, we can go ahead and track. I'm just going to use a planar tracker, put it after your media, change the type to hybrid, change motion type to translation rotation scale. Draw a box around the area you want to track. Make sure you're at the beginning of your timeline and then track board. Since there's not a lot of motion in this shot, it should track fairly quickly. All right, once your track is done, go ahead and click on this create planar transform. You can go ahead and delete the tracker. And then with this planar transform, we're going to put it in where our shape is. Now our scale should follow the path of our tracker. All right, there's a few things I can do to make this a little bit nicer. I'm going to add a little bit of green to this. To do that, I'm going to add in a background, use my shape as a mask to cut out the shape of the background. Now you might notice because they're different resolutions that it kind of breaks the image. So we will need to add in a resize and a transform. Now just the resize seemed to have solved the problem, but you can also add in a transform if you want and readjust the image as you need. So right now I'm going to go ahead and add in some green, just a little bit so we get that tattoo ink look. And then I'm going to go to my merge and I'm going to bring the blend down. So we can bring the blend down so some of the skin is showing through and we get some of that texture. And now this is still looking pretty rigid so I'm going to add in a blur and now this is looking much more like a real tattoo feel free to change the blend and anything else that you want on it now let's go ahead and go to the grid warp method because as much as I like this method and it is a lot easier on your computer the grid warp method does give a little bit better results if you watch this closely you can see that it doesn't stick exactly and it does slide around a little bit the grid warp will stick a lot better so let's go ahead and just get rid of all of this we don't need it on our media here, we're going to add in a grid warp. Go ahead and change the grid size to 20 by 20, and then change the magnet type to selected. What we're going to do is we're going to select our region that we want tracked. The more you select, the longer it's going to track, obviously. Go ahead and do this little drop down. Go to publish to tracker. Now it's kicked off a little tracker right here, and we can see all our tracking points. Now we just need to change a few things. Adaptive mode, set to best match. Go back to the beginning, and then track. This method will take a lot longer. You can go ahead and see the time down here at the bottom. Okay, now that the tracking's done, now we just need to re rearrange a few things. Take your grid warp, go ahead and merge it into your tracker, make sure it's on the top there, and then we're going to put our image right into the grid warp. Make sure it's all connected so we have the grid warp in our flow. Now we need to resize this. Go ahead and add a transform after this merge, and then we can resize everything. Make sure that you get it in the position where the grid warp is actually happening. Now that we have it in the right spot, there's a couple things that we can do here. Again, we can add in a background, add in a little bit of green. use a resize and transform again just to get it in the right spot if it's an odd shape just go ahead and deselect this use size aspect and then you can change these individually then I'm going to go to this merge I'm going to change the apply mode to soft light this lets me see through to the skin looks pretty good I'm going to add some green now go to your media and you can render this in place it'll just play back a lot quicker that way As you can tell, it may take a long time to render, which is why I prefer the other method for a quick, simple solution. Once it's done, you can go ahead and compare the two, see which method you like, and see which one you want to use. All right, that'll do it for me. Subscribe for more awesome videos like this. Go make something awesome, and we'll see you next time. Bye now.